Hi, it's Craig and Richard here. So the first of the feedback videos for uh, for this run of the uh, Mindfulness for Wellbeing and Peak Performance. So uh, it's been tremendous to be back with everybody and uh, our mentors um, have uh, given us a, a great summary. Uh, so Susan and Sherelle, so please you know, follow them throughout the course. But uh, we've got thousands of, uh, of joiners and... Six, um, uh, over, uh, nearly 7,000 now. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And... Uh, and over a thousand comments, so there's plenty of great discussion happening and um, sharing of uh, enthusiasm, but also insights. And, uh, and welcome back to our repeat learners as well. So it's a great mindfulness community that's really grown up to over say, the years. Yeah. yeah. So some interesting um, things to explore this week, uh, Richard. So um, first thing uh, is uh, people becoming aware of how distracted they are. <laughs> well, that's the first step in becoming more mindful, isn't it, Craig? To realise just how unmindful we are. Mm. Because we can actually be so unmindful that we don't even realise how unmindful we are, right? Yeah, if somebody <laughs> tells you I'm, I'm present all the time, they're either enlightened or uh, just totally asleep. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my, my mind doesn't wander when I meditate, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even that famous Harvard study that found that we're distracted about 50% of the time, mm. I think the people in that study didn't even notice. You know, the alert goes off and they're like, oh, yeah, I was paying attention, but maybe mm. we're not. And that's what a lot of our learners have started to notice, that even when watching the videos that we produce, mm. their mind's wandering off, they're getting distracted by their phones. And, and that's a really important thing to notice. First, yeah. we notice the distraction and perhaps the costs or the effects of that. And then we start to practice being more present. And that's really the, the that's point right. of this training. I think it creates an illusion for many people that, oh, I'm going backwards. I'm learning mindfulness, but I'm going backwards when it's actually a sign of progress. Well, yeah, that's right. Noticing the distractibility yeah. and hopefully noticing it without criticism. Well, that's the point, isn't it? Mindfulness yeah. is a non-judgmental awareness. So often the awareness comes first and the non-judgment lags a little bit. Yeah. But we want to notice it without judging it, but also start to retrain ourselves. And that was another point that some of our learners started to, to, to notice, which is that we can just use the senses, literally come to our senses. That's yeah. what that expression means, yeah. to feel the feet on the ground, to notice what we can see or hear or smell or taste. Yeah. And that brings us back into the present moment. So we, once we've noticed that we're distracted, we can just ground ourselves again back in the present. Yeah, because when the, <clears throat> those sensory circuits are re-engaged, the proprioceptive areas of the brain are engaged, it switches off the default circuit. So we start to hear what somebody's saying rather than listening to the commentary. The commentary mind, about it, yeah. Which, and, you know, which may have nothing to do with what the person's saying. We start to see what's there instead of seeing a movie playing in our head that we're taking to be real. Yeah. So the senses cuts through that kind That's of distracted right. default yeah. mental activity. Yeah. And it's so simple. Yeah but not easy. No. And that's the point, isn't it? That it's conceptually the simplest thing in the world. Notice that you're distracted, get yourself back in the game by paying attention to what's happening in the senses. Yeah. But the practice of that, it takes work. And that's yeah. why we've got a four week course ahead. And it's also why we encourage all of our learners to do mm -hmm. this course week by week, rather than rushing through and finishing all the content in the first week, which I think has actually happened less in this run of the course than mm -hmm. it has in previous runs, yeah. Craig. But we strongly encourage all of our learners just, just to do the experiments, do all of the exercises, the meditations, take it slowly, yeah. apply it to your lives so that you can actually start to learn this because it's a great idea, yeah, be more present, but the practice of it often takes, I don't know about your experience, but it takes work. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the expertise over time is not becoming more complex and sophisticated, it's actually becoming more and more simple. And... Um, uh, but uh, it really does require practice, and that's the bit that's uh, not so easy. Yeah, both through informal sort of applications, just being more mindful in day-to-day -day life, but also the meditations, Craig. Yeah. And, and so our learners really like the comma, the shorter practice. Yeah, and comma with a double M, not double M. Uh, yeah, C O double M A, yeah. not coma. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a correct. different practice. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Don't practice that one. <clears throat> but um, and the body scan as well. Yeah. But um, those little brief moments, uh, the, those little commas, they can be very short sometimes. Just the briefest space between one thing and another can really help to reinforce the mindfulness when we go back into doing whatever we need to do next. So it's great if people are practicing plenty of those because they can be tremendously helpful in keeping us mindful in the informal way uh, as we're going about our lives. Yeah, and in, in that great book, The Brain That Changes Itself, there, there's a conversation around massed practice. So in, when we do something intensively, that's when we see the, the most neural change. Mm. So sitting and meditating, whether it's for a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes every day, is really rewiring the brain. And, and that's meaning that it's much easier to be mindful throughout the rest of the day. So that's right. strongly in, in encouraging people to, to do the meditation practices yeah. each week. And, and you see the very natural flow on into day-to-day -day life, you know, when trying to study and noticing that the mind's wandered off again, to noticing more quickly the attention coming back. 
that's where it really starts to translate into to well-being and, and also, uh, as we're saying, peak performance. If people find it helpful, certainly keeping a, a practice record can be useful just to, yeah. to map how much is being practiced. Sometimes we think we're practicing less than we are or we think we're practicing more than we are, so yeah. it can certainly help to give us a bit of an objective measure right. of that. As can setting alarms, putting in calendar entries, putting post-it notes around, doing meditation with other people, getting them to remind you. There are lots of strategies for establishing a practice, yeah. and we just want to really get that routine going. Now, many people have been saying that <clears throat> the, the going at one's own pace is really important. Well, as I was saying before, it's an experiential course, so really we want to be doing this slowly at, at a pace that, that works for us, rather than rushing ahead, which is just that, that, that habit of the mind, isn't it? We get bored and we're like, okay, what's next? What's next week's content? Let's just skip over that. But to go slowly, and in, in a sense, some of our learners even appreciated being given permission to do that, to not, to not rush through things and, and to go slowly with mm. things, which perhaps isn't, isn't always what we necessarily do. And that's, it, it's a very good way to learn. Yeah, See, I, I think yeah. also for those who are experiencing, say, you know, have had anxiety or had difficulties or, uh, and so on, it's, it's very important that a person's going at their own pace, not being pushed. To, to go into practice is not comfortable with or to practice for a length of time that the person doesn't feel comfortable with. And we need to kind of trust our own internal barometer as far as that's concerned, I think. That's right. And at the mm -hmm. same time, keeping in mind that mindfulness isn't about feeling good or positive thinking. It's about being more present with what mm -hmm. is. So if we do, if we are feeling stressed or tired or upset in some way, if, if, if we do have some anxiety, if we start to practice mindfulness, we're going to come face to face with that. Mm. And so it's about developing the ability to sit with that without then reacting to that and getting caught up in judgments and stories about how we're feeling, which of course compounds mm. things. Yeah. It's about learning to sit with discomfort, to be present with whatever's happening. If we're feeling comfortable and great, awesome, can we, can we be present with that without getting attached to that state? Mm. And if we're feeling uncomfortable, can we sit with that without reacting to it? Yeah. And that's really the practice. So it's this fine line, isn't it, between being willing to do the practice, but also perhaps going, going mm. relatively yeah. slowly. There's a question, <clears throat> how do I know if I'm uh, doing it right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. right? <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's exactly right, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I guess what we're doing is we're practicing a non-judgmental awareness. Yeah. But the mind gets busy, you know, we, we start practicing mindfulness and, and in one moment we're present, then, the, then we think, oh, hang on, I think I'm, I'm really getting this now. Well, this mindfulness is really working. And if I keep doing this, where's that going to go? And then suddenly we realize, hang on, I'm, where am I? I'm in the future imagining some mindful life 10 years from now. And then we just come back to what's happening right now. And that's really the point of this practice. Yeah, so thinking about, oh, I'm doing it right could be as much of a distraction about having an internal dialogue with ourselves or about doing thinking it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. That's right, exactly. Um, yeah. So thinking about being mindful is uh, perhaps a different thing <laughs> to actually being mindful. It's a very different, <laughs> but it's a very subtle thing. And yeah. I think only with practice do we start to realise the difference. There's been um, some interesting discussions about um, technology. Oh, sure has. Yeah. And... Uh, and which uh, can be a wonderful servant, but a tyrannical master. Indeed. And um, and uh, and some and there is quite a lot of research coming out now about uh, the overuse of social media um, uh, can have a negative impact on on well-being, on mental health, um, on uh, emotional intelligence, and so on. And, but there's some subtle distinctions, and and the point is not to demonise or so, social media or all um, technology, but to use it consciously. Uh, discerningly. And I think one of the things from a social media point of view is that it can be helpful if it helps to facilitate people connecting with others. And Genuine connection. Actually helping people to turn up and have, you know, get together with friends and uh, help people to actually you know, be more socially engaged. But when the social media is replacing the actual face-to-face -face yep. engagement with people, which it is for many people, then that doesn't help at the, all. The research is pretty clear on that, that that doesn't, that that, that, that you know, damages our mental health and, and reduces genuine connection. Yeah, yeah. The, the capacity and the confidence and how to communicate. And for many people, it's easy to send off an angry, aggressive um, uh, tweet um, to somebody, for example, that if you're actually face-to-face -face with the person, hopefully you'd, you wouldn't you'd, say be, that. <laughs> you'd, 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 you'd be more respectful yeah. and you'd, you'd hopefully, you know, be able to share different perspectives on things. And, yeah. But it can be a very polarising thing, the way that social media is used sometimes. And so mindfulness helps us to use it 
skillfully, to pay yeah. attention to how we're using it, to the effect that that's having on us, to pause before hitting send on that tweet, to mm. notice if we're on our phone yet again. Mm. And of course, there are strategies like flight mode in the phone, putting it out of reach, turning off social media for a little yeah. bit, or just, you know, different ways of using it well. Yes, yeah. that's right. So, yeah, so, so just some final comments as well, you know, some interesting things that came up from some of our learners really liked Viktor Frankl's very famous quote, which is that bes between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom, which yes. I think just cap captures mindfulness perfectly, doesn't it? It does. I if our thoughts and experiences are here, we're just reacting to everything. But as soon as we start to practice, get a little bit of space between us and our thoughts and, and reactions, yeah. and then we can start to choose what's most useful. And that's, that's, right. a, that's a very useful thing. Yeah, so the, 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 the standing back, the awareness, the non-attachment to what's being observed, yeah. that opens up that window of opportunity. And we have to be mindful to actually have that window of opportunity. And that's where the freedom lies, really. That's right. Um, if we're caught up on automatic pilot, there's no freedom in that. We're just no. responding in the way that we're programmed to respond. That's right. Yeah. My and past habits, etc. And caught up in what ifs rather than focusing on yeah. what is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so anyway, it's been a very rich week. We've really enjoyed um, uh, hearing um, the great dialogues and discussions. Please continue to follow the the mentors. Um, throughout the uh, the coming week, and continue uh, to post to support each other. Yeah. You know, share your experiences and and, and support one another. Because yeah. as we said before, you know, this community that gets formed is one of the yeah. you know, one of the really powerful things about this course. That's right. We'll be looking at um, stress, the physical effects of um, of meditation, the coming importance next of week. informal practice. Yeah, we'll yeah. be looking at all these things. So share insights, share questions, share challenges, um, because we'll all learn from each other's experience. So yeah. we'll look forward to being with you next week. See you next week.